before we can begin looking at the comic, even to those who have never read this one, or any comic book ever, will probably conjure up a very specific image in mind when I talk about Bane with regards to Batman. Wait, wait, what? Oh god! Oh, my back just snapped like a pack of uncooked spaghetti! Yeah, poor Bane can try to do a lot of things, but he never has been able to successfully wipe out the image of his first impression. And here's the book that started it all. Nightfall can be considered a combination of two ideas, although the second idea in question would be addressed in its sequel. The first one is to have a Death of Superman style story for Batman, in which the hero faces his greatest defeat at the hand of a new unknown foe, and in the hero's absence, who would try to fill the void left by said hero. The second idea relates to said filling of the void. What if the replacement was willing to go places his predecessor wasn't? Now, a Batman who kills being the main version of the character might seem absurd to modern readers, but you need to remember this was the 90s, a time where it was sometimes impossible to tell the difference between a hero and villain. If the replacement, I'm going with the fan nickname of Asbats from here on, would have been popular with readers, he may as well have become the new Batman. But his abrasive nature, yes, even compared to the Bruce of the time, well, it definitely turned a lot of readers off. Fun fact, Asbats, or Jean-Paul Valley, would become much more popular once he started becoming a nice person after the story ended. But yes, let's talk about the story. And there really isn't much to it. Bane was born in a prison on Santa Prisca, grew up to take over the place, and hated bats. Once he heard there was an American city ruled by a Batman, you know where this is going. However, let's talk about one of the best parts of the book, while also appreciating that if you really think about it, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Bane, in a stunning display of intelligence, decides not to face Batman directly at first. Instead, he breaks every member of Batman's rogues gallery out of Arkham, allowing Batman to run himself ragged while doing so, before finally facing him. This is a brilliant plan, and it does in fact work. But Bane is still beholden to some aspects of villainous stupidity. Even though his whole plan to destroy the Bat is basically a war of attrition, he doesn't bother finishing him off until he's fought every escaped inmate. Despite having, you know, multiple opportunities to finish him off throughout the story. Yes, I know some of you will argue it fits Bane to face him at the end of the story, but once you start going there, it's really hard to ignore the man pulling the strings, so to speak. As for Batman himself, while it is certainly impressive to see Bruce run the gauntlet and show why he is so awesome, the fact that he doesn't rest or doesn't allow others to help him as much, it, it can get annoying after a while. And when he does go for help, after Bane breaks his back, he decides to hand off the mantle of the bat to Jean Paul, who is a former assassin recovering from his brainwashing who immediately begins to regress once in the role of Batman and ends up becoming as Bat. Yeah, so contractual Bond villain stupidity aside, Bane certainly comes out of this one looking the more intelligent person. In the end, this certainly isn't a cerebral Batman story that showcases his intelligence, but instead one that shows him as a stubborn force for good. At least until Bane enters the picture. With the joke. Oh my god, no! Oh, like a string of firecrackers, my f***ing back!